Ramagut, I guess it's more in place so fault for Parson to it's fault for if a girl could have gone there. Quick old school van I guess quick on cold all talk to show. It's rarely I have the opportunity to be a full member of a trinity, uh, holy or otherwise, um, and it is a great pleasure to uh, be here uh, to open this very important conference, in particular to open it because it is a very special expression of a partnership between ourselves, Maynooth University, Throker and St. Patrick's College, Maynooth, um, that share a campus together and therefore share uh, some opportunities as well as some objectives. It's a great pleasure to welcome you all here. Um, the only time I see this lecture theatre is full is for my first first year biology lesson uh, lecture, not for my second or third. It's a great pleasure to welcome you uh, all here and also to welcome those many who are joining the proceedings via live stream. Climate justice is about enabling the developing world not to make the mistakes, uh, as illustrated in that beautiful poem that we've just heard, not to make the mistakes that have been made and not to bear the burdens of climate change that have been created by the developed world. This involves interaction, engagement and dialogue between the developing and the developed world, an area where this university and St. Patrick's College have a very proud heritage. I do want to say a few things about the commitment of this university to climate justice. We're committed uh, through our scholarship and our teaching. We're committed at global and local levels and in our institutional actions. Climate change has been a feature of the curriculum in Maynooth for almost 40 years. And the university contains Ireland's only specialised research unit solely devoted to climate change, ICRIS. It also pioneered Ireland's first taught master's degree in climate change and has contributed authors and reviewers to a number of the IPCC's assessment reports. We're proud that Maynooth is now recognised as the go-to place for scientists, policymakers, and media interests over the past three decades. And I'm very pleased to say uh, that that capacity, so strongly developed under the leadership of Professor John Sweden, who joins us here, continues with the appointment of a Professor of Physical Geography Climate Science, Professor Peter Thorne, another uh, uh, global expert in climate change. Uh, John's shoes will never be filled, but at least a very similar pair of shoes uh, are, being, are, are being filled in the university. The Departments of Geography, Adult and Community Education and Biology at Maynooth, on a global level, uh, work with three universities in Malawi and Zambia to explore opportunities for transformative change around issues of climate change and food security for rural communities in Africa. This is, as I say, an indication of our global commitment to be a highly successful cooperation for all parties and has resulted in very significant uh, outcomes for all involved. This university takes very seriously the implications of the IPC's fifth assessment report, which indicates the urgent need for action on decarbonisation, especially of developed world economies within the next 35 years. It notes that all Irish governments since 1990 have accepted and signed off on all IPCC reports. And this is why I very much like the... Um, title of this conference, Meeting the Challenge of Climate Justice from Evidence, that has always been the role of a university to provide evidence, but from evidence to action. What is our role as activists as well as the providers of evidence? As such, the university is committed to reducing its own carbon emissions as far as possible and reducing its carbon footprint generally. We're very supportive of the Antashka Green Campus Programme to instill in students and staff the mentality of sustainability which is required. I'm really delighted to be able to say there's a very active Maynooth Green Campus Committee and uh, Joe Laragy, very centrally involved from the university in the organisation of this conference, has shown real leadership uh, in this area. Um, and we're mobilising students and staff around the key themes of energy, water, waste, biodiversity, travel and transport. And I'm not going to list all our achievements under those, though they have been significant. What I want to highlight is our Green Campus group is unique in adopting climate justice as a specific theme in its work programme from the outset. Partly the reason for that is that our Green Campus Initiative is a partnership between uh, ourselves, St. Patrick's College Maynooth and Throker, and I think that partnership naturally a discussion of climate justice arises in that context. So we have engaged academic departments in relation to the extent of environmental sustainability and course material. We've taken steps to develop interdisciplinary work on climate justice and we've been very active and very prominently involved in an annual Social Justice Week highlighting climate justice and organising seminars among student groups on this topic. And I can see several people from Maynooth Students' Union 
uh, here, and they, our student body have been exceptionally active in supporting social justice generally, but climate justice in particular. There's a strong push for universities to divest from the fossil fuel industry, and we have, as a university, have committed to no investments in the fossil fuel industry going forward. We have no such investments at present. We're very keen to take a leadership position in this area, and it's a pleasure to welcome uh, a representative from 350. Bill McKibben's delayed, I think, but will be joining us. Uh, but the, the local representative is here. We are keen to take a leadership position. Personally, an institution, we have to be a little bit guarded. We have to be sensitive to the accusation that it's easy for us. We have no such investment, so it's easy for us to advocate that others should divest. Nonetheless, this university is prepared to adopt a leadership position in this area, and amongst the things that will inform us is the deliberations at this conference and the guidance of the Maynooth Green Campus Committee in advising us how best we can adopt a leadership position in the wider campaign. This conference on the crystallising challenge of climate justice is a logical extension, therefore, of our efforts and the efforts of the three partners in the pursuit of development, global justice and environmental sustainability. There's a wonderful array of speakers uh, uh, here, uh, global thinkers, campaigners, and very many exciting plenaries, network opportunities, and the opportunity to address specific themes in workshops. I do want to extend a very particular welcome uh, to, to Mary Robinson. I've always admired her courage uh, in, in very many dimensions, but in recent years in particular, her courage in advocating uh, for issues around climate justice. If I may be allowed a moment of levity, I also admire her courage in returning to this lecture theatre. The last time she spoke here, the fire alarm went off for 15 minutes. 15 solid minutes of a 45 minute keynote. And if I may say, we've got to the bottom of it. Um, <laughs> What happened was somebody leaned against a brake glass unit, enough to activate it, but not enough to break it, set off the fire alarm. The entire is, there is something more embarrassing than your phone going off <laughs> during a keynote. Our people shut down the fire alarm, and as soon as they did, the responsible individual relaxed and leaned back against <laughs> the, the brake glass unit. So I can assure you that will not happen again. Uh, and if it does, if those of you leaning against the wall might just lean forward uh, permanently, we'd be delighted to see it. You're very welcome back, uh, Mrs. Robinson, to, to this institution, and we're really delighted to have you here today to give the keynote in a few moments' time. I hope that today and tomorrow will not only inform and inspire, but will also be a call to everyone to move, from the, to move on from the abundant evidence of human-induced climate change to take action. We must radically diminish the extent of greenhouse gas emissions, and we must take measures to enable adaptation so as to protect and sustain vulnerable communities, some already affected by climate change. There is a small but growing advocacy coalition for action on climate change and climate justice in civil society among elected governments and in part of the business world, and I see quite a few representatives of the business world here. But we have to face it, there is also a great deal of resistance from vested interests and a great deal of inertia. We need to promote and develop, through actions such as this conference, that coalition for change, and lay the groundwork for new paradigms of economic and social development that are decarbonising and environmentally sustainable. In that very noble and important goal, I wish this conference every success. Grandma, give